Welcome to Boyd's Presbyterian Church, and we welcome those who are participating by Zoom as well. And now for the life of the church. We're privileged today to have Elder Norma Russell delivering the message. I'm the liturgist, Cornelia Burr, and Jeannie Lavash is doing the AV and support. Uh, today after worship, we'll have fellowship in Pollock Williams Hall. Volunteers are welcome to help with Zoom and to be the liturgist. Volunteers are needed to clean the sanctuary in Pollock Williams Hall. And uh, we have a few announcements in the bulletin. Uh, the Lunch Bunch will meet tomorrow, July 15th at 12 p.m. at Long Arm Steakhouse. Uh, please contact Melinda Tibbles and her information is there if you plan to attend. We've got a, quite a group coming, which is great. Uh, the deacons will meet today after fellowship to make casseroles for a cause to benefit Shepherd's Table and Stepping Stone Shelter. Volunteers can join the deacons in Kerr Hall. Uh, Girl Scout Camp Sunshine will be held the week of July 15th to 19th. And Derek Longbreak welcomes the opportunity to schedule visits with our church community. Currently, he's taking a vacation and will return Thursday morning. He'll be available on August 8th. If you'd like to schedule a visit, his email is in the bulletin. And then the, the information on the per capita for 2024 is also there. And the deacons are continuing to collect food for WOMCO. And now we will light the Christ candle. We light the Christ candle remembering Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Please stand as you're able and join in the call to worship. God called. God gathers. God challenges. God moves. God liberates. God saves. Guide, guide us in our lives, God. O Holy One, so, so that all, all creation, creation might, might flourish. Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us to this place to worship you, to fellowship together, to greet our friends, to rest and enjoy the blessings of the day. Although there are many challenges ahead of us, Father, we come to you for strength, for wisdom, so that we would know when and how you would have us to act. We invite your presence in this place, and we thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn will be the first verse only of number 476, O Worship the King. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing God's power and God's love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days. Pavilion in splendor and girded with Praise. Please be seated. And now we will read together the prayer of confession. Holy God, we belittle ourselves in the face of overwhelming problems. We tell ourselves that we are powerless to create positive change. We tell ourselves peace is impossible as we invest billions in weapons of war. 
We refuse new ideas, new solutions, new voices. We are stuck, trapped in our own comfortable ways. Forgive our reluctance, God. Forgive our ignorance. Forgive our excuse making. Turn us to all that is possible through you. Christ has set us free. Claim your forgiveness. Rejoice in God's grace. Respond with bold, courageous love. Amen. Christ, we are forgiven. And now let us sing hymn number 579. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. For Amen. Amen. Please, please be seated. I invite you to join in the prayer of illumination. Prepare our hearts and minds for the hearing of your word, holy God. Open us to your truth. Humble us to your way. Amen. The first scripture lesson is from Amos 7, 10 to 15. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos had said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away from the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophecy there, but never again prophecy at Bethel, for it's the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, go prophecy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture lesson is taken from the books of Acts, chapter one, verses four through eight. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom, of Is the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is God's word for God's people. As Cornelia read in the seventh chapter of Amos, it's easy to feel powerless in the wake of the world's overwhelming and complicated problems. Really, what can we do about climate change? What can we do about wars and conflicts? What can we do about systemic oppression 
How can we relieve poverty and disease? What in the world can we do? Recently, there was a youth conference and the speaker was speaking about power, what it is, who has it, and how it can be used to create positive change. Power is not just held by the world's leaders or the wealthiest 1%. When I was a child, my brother and I used to enjoy playing that popular game, Monopoly. And even after the board was folded up and put away, he especially liked to boast about how he won the game. How he was able to acquire Boardwalk and Park Place. How he had X number of dollars and how little money I had. Well, being nine years younger than him, of course I didn't have much money. And of course he won the game every single time. But that gave him the feeling of having power over his little sister. And many people today still equate finances, property, positions, and titles with having power. But we all have access to a kind of power. That power is within us especially those of us who draw that power from Almighty God. God empowers from within, not from without. God empowers us, us to say yes to doing what is just and what is right, even when doing so is not popular may even be dangerous. Today's text from the book of Amos introduces us to one of the minor prophets, a book we often overlook, a book some people may have never visited or read, um, seldom quoted from, but there is one popular quote that comes from the book of Amos and I'll share that with you later. But this minor prophet was called by God to confront the powers of Israel. Verses 14 and 15 in chapter seven gave us the only thing we know about Amos. He wasn't a professional prophet. He didn't even inherit it through his family. His father wasn't a prophet. We know nothing about his parentage. He didn't go to prophet school. The text tells us that Amos was a herdsman. He owned sheep and a dresser of sycamore trees. This is why I love the Bible. They give you enough information. Well, they give me, me, enough information to make you wonder, but, but what about, but how, but how did that happen? And, and why was it that way? So I did some research. There are different kinds of sycamore trees. There are different kinds of fruit from sycamore trees. And the fig is one such fruit. Not the fig that we in America know. These were small, furry, often hard, but sweet fruit. These, uh, this fruit did not ripen naturally on its own. Each individual piece of fruit had to be pierced with a stick in order for it to ripen and be fit to eat. So, and this is what Amos did. Yes, he had flocks of sheep, but he was not wealthy enough to be able to afford to hire 
hands to help him with his sheep. He had to do all that himself. In that part of the world, it's dry and the amount of rainfall is not something you can depend on So, uh, to grow crops. So the sheep have nothing to feed on. He had to travel to another part of the then world to um, so that his, his sheep could feed. And there was an unspoken agreement that you could travel to someone else's property and in return for them allowing you to uh, herd your sheep on their land, then you had to pierce all of these hundreds and thousands of pieces of figs. So it was a barter system. So that's why he was a dresser of sycamore trees in addition to being a herdsman. He spent his days with his sheep and cattle making sure that the small figs were ripened. It was painstaking, time consuming and tedious. Yet this was who God called to send a message to the leaders in Israel. Amos is a book full of judgment against Israel, against Israel's king and any others willing to be misled in order to maintain their comfortable lifestyles. God sends Amos to the seat of Israel's power, to the king's sanctuary, to speak condemning words of truth. Why would the powerful listen to this herdsman who pokes fruit with sticks? Why would anyone take seriously what Amos had to say? Well, as Michael Jenkins writes in his book, Feasting on the Word, a true word in the mouth of an honest person, whether credentialed or not, can bring down any power on earth. God is no respecter of persons. The prophet Amaziah reported, the land is not able to bear all of Amos's words. The religious and political elites of Israel felt threatened and Amaziah asked Amos to leave and go preach elsewhere. If the herdsman can effectively harness the power of God, so can we, and so can our young people. The story is told of a speaker at a high school conference Talking to the young people about being empowered. One young woman sat, sitting on the front row was taking copious notes. The goal of the conference wasn't just to teach them about power, but to leave them feeling empowered. The conference concluded with stories of young people boldly and conscientiously working for change such as the Pakistani activist for girls' rights, Malala Yousafzai, climate change advocate, Greta Thun Th Thunberg, and the Parkland High School students who organized for gun control legislation. As the stories were told, the young lady stopped writing. She listened intently, leaning forward, her face brightening. The speaker said he believed God was speaking to her at that moment, calling her. By the look in her eyes, there was no doubt she was ready to say yes to God, to use her power for good. May we all be so bold. Someone that most of us, I hope, know and have heard of and have heard quotations from. Used the phrase, and we often attribute it to him, but he was not the origin of the phrase. 
Let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. I must say, until I studied for today, I always thought that was uh, original, that originated with Martin Luther King Jr. It did not. He was, before he became a civil rights activist, he was a minister. And many, most, a lot of his speeches were taken from the Bible. This is one instance where it was. This quotation is found in the fifth chapter of Amos, verse 24. The book of Amos is a lesson in justice, a lesson in boldness, a lesson in using power, more importantly, a lesson in being used by God to speak truth to power. Let us stand and sing hymn number 260. A mighty fortress is our God. A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never failing. Our helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. Were not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dost ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth, his name. From age to age the same. And he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One with the tall word shall fail him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abided. The spirit and the gifts are ours. Through him who with us sided. 
Let goods and kindred go. This mortal life also, the body they may kill. God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Please be seated. And now we'll read together the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we will have a few minutes to think about our blessings and our invitation to share. God dwells among us, making all things new. Let us participate in this new creation by offering our gifts to God. In gratitude to God for all our blessings, let us thank God for all that we've been given. And now we'll sing the doxology number 592. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Most generous God, you have blessed us with gifts to serve and to share. May the offerings we present today be used to promote the peace, justice, and healing you desire for us and our world. Amen. You may be seated. Sorry. <laughs> you know what to do. Okay. Do we have any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. I have a lot of people who are praying for God. Thank you. Kara? My son and his son are both out in the land of Mexico this week. We have got to go on. And I'm 
<laughs> it probably is for them. <laughs> Melinda? So I just want to offer a prayer of giving. We have our lunch lunch tomorrow that we'll be meeting. We'll be kicking it off again. Uh, if anyone else would like to come, just let me know. We have a grateful mess that we have hope to be. What's your name? Daryl. Daryl. Bob. Anyone else? I have a prayer for Wendy Such Tiger and Nikki Ryan. Okay. And I would like your prayers for uh, healing. <laughs> I was on a pleasure trip with my grandson and had a, not, I didn't fall, uh, slip. And yeah, <laughs> maybe it would have been better if I'd fallen, but uh, the muscles don't respond the way they used to. And so they're rebelling. <laughs> Are there any others? Let's approach the throne of grace with humble hearts and quiet spirits. God of heaven and earth, creator of all things. During these scorching days of our summer, the terrorizing wars, discouraging national news, we, your people, come to you with grateful hearts. with thankful spirits. We recognize the difficulties around us and we feel you tugging at our hearts to heed Christ's call to discipleship, to care, to serve, to delight in blessings bestowed. On this Sabbath day, we stop to pray for those who are suffering. We ask, Lord, humbly for comfort for Todd, for Laura and family, for Carol's son and grandson, for Daryl, for Jim, for Wendy and her husband, for Nicole. And we thank you for the lunch bunch Thank you for all those who contributed to the casserole. Father, we ask you for people who are seeking mere survival in Ukraine, in Gaza, in Sudan, for people who need homes to call their own, a place of safety and refuge. For people 
seek an escape from the heat waves and tropical storms and natural disasters. For others seeking a cure for disease or the ease of physical pain. For people seeking relief from endless waves of grief. For people seeking spiritual peace to cool the anger that burns within them. For people seeking healing from mental or physical illness. Lord, we know that we are not powerless. We recognize the power we hold to make this world more just, more equitable, more right, safer. Equip us, teach us with the wisdom to know what is best and the courage to do what is right. Now, as one body in Christ, hear our prayer as we recite the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing hymn number 420, God of grace and God of glory. I am not sure where this hymn came from, but I don't know it. <laughs> Can someone help me with it? A little bit. It says Dr. Foss in the Riverside Church in, 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 um, in New York. My mother lived in an apartment uh, with another co-minister there while he was a minister at uh, Riverside Church in, in, um, in the 40s. Henry, Henry M. Foss did does anyone know the tune to this song? Praise and God of glory on thy people from thy ancient church's story bring it back to glorious flag grant us wisdom grant us courage for the facing of the south, for the facing of the south. Though the hosts of evil around us scorn thy Christ, assail thy ways. From the fears that long have bound us, free our hearts to faith and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. For the living of these days. Cure thy children's warring madness, bend our pride to thy control. Shame our want and selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, 
Grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Grant we miss thy kingdom's goal. Set our feet on lofty places, heard our lives that they may be armored with all Christ like graces, pledged to set all captives free. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage. That we fail not in believe, that we fail not in believe. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deem for. Let the gift of thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving thee whom we adore. Serving thee whom we adore. God calls, God loves, spirit guides. Just as God gathered us for worship, God sends us out, redeemed, renewed, ready to live and love faithfully. May the grace, hope, peace, and love of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with us all now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen.